do that, guess what? Poof. You're well. Well being. Well being. And it's not just back issues. No, it's not just physical either, is it? No. It's um it's, it's such a powerful mental, thing. Spiritual. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's I wish I think that a lot more people are turning toward different types of healing now. I think so too. I think they're being more open to it. I hope. Um sir, we're on air. Can you come back? Okay. There's no soliciting if you're selling something. So thank you. Um got some people here. Let me look. Oh, I can't get to it. I had a comment or two I was going to say, but that's all right. I can't get to it right now. <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, it's difficult when um, when people, when you want to help them, but they don't want to help themselves. Like, how do you get past that? I don't think you can. That's why you can't go get people to help. That's right. They have to come to you. That's and, you know, right. it's the same with coaching. Mm -hmm. If somebody, if I sit down with somebody, I can tell within a half an hour, if not sooner, if they're going to be a good coaching client. And one of the ways is when you're talking to them and you say something meaningful, and you, I'm sure, have find this in your in um, chiropractic too. If you say something meaningful and they go back to the thing that they said before, when what you said just addressed that, they don't, they're not going to accept your help. They're not going to accept the healing. They're not even hearing they're you. They're not even hearing you. Right. Right. And I think that that's the important part that, you know, you have to, as a, as a person who, who tries to help people heal, you have to be aware of those blocks and you have to recognize it because otherwise you're beating your head against the wall. Mm-hmm. And then you think it's you. Right. I had a coaching client like that once. I could not get through to this woman. But finally I realized, I would say after four times, that she was so hung up in her own self-pity that there was no way that I could help her. Yeah. Doesn't that just make you feel impotent? Yeah. And it's I wanted hard. to. And it, she could have. She was a really strong woman. Her husband went out on her with a younger woman, and she was very attractive, but she lost all her self-confidence. But she was so stuck in that pit of poor me mm -hmm. that, and that same with those people that you were talking about, that she could not see beyond that. And until you are ready to see beyond that, it doesn't matter how many hands come down to lift you up. You're not grabbing them. Right. I'm going to give you an example from the office. Um this happens over and over again. I mean, it doesn't, <clears throat> it's not every patient, don't get me wrong, but I get this a lot. People will come in and I'll do my thing and I'll do their assessment and I'll do their consultative history and I'll go through everything. I'll spend an hour with them. I'll, you know, get them adjusted. I'll regulate their organ systems. I'll test them nutritionally. I'll give them the whole plan. I'll write it all out, give them a copy and they'll come back the next week and they'll go, you know, I felt good for a couple of days, but now it's all back. I'm like, oh, OK, well, let me take this out. OK, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? We well, no. No. Oh, OK. Did you do what we talked about with this and change this? No. Fix me. I mean, they don't they don't go there in those many words, but I'm giving you a short. So they're version. not taking the responsibility upon right. themselves for their own. So then I usually get sarcastic because I do that. <laughs> so I'm like, how could you not? I'm right. So then I'm like, well, you know, um, I spent 15 minutes or I spent an hour with you a week ago and you've spent 24 hours with you ever since. Who's got the greater responsibility here? Oh, that's brilliant. And then Ooh, I, I'm going to have to use that. And then sometimes when they get real uh, uh, defensive, because usually they get defensive about that, well, time, which is fine, because that's what I'm trying to invoke anyway, because I want to see where they're at with it all. You know, do they get defensive? Do they not? Are they like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I want to see how they react. But then I usually go on to say, you know, it's fine with me. You can keep coming every week for the rest of your life. My kids got to go to college, too. 
And they don't like that. I mean, they do. They laugh. They giggle sometimes. But they look at me like, are you for real? And I'm like, no, seriously, are you for real? Why are you here? You came here. You asked me to help. I gave you my advice. And it's not the same. Like, I don't feel like it's the same. Like, when you go into a medical doctor's office and they try to prescribe a bunch of pills to you and they try to tell you you need this or that, you know, you absolutely have the ability to reject that information and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to, you know, you can but pick and choose. But that's too difficult. It, and for some, well, that's some true. People, people would want rather that. mask those. Symptoms yeah, they want to mask get, it, or they want quick fix, or whatever. So, but a doctor, a medical doctor, I have heard from people in the community, you know, they get uh, annoyed and offended, and they will literally kick you out of their practice and say, "You can't be my patient if you don't listen to me anymore." Now, I would never do that. I would never say that. But I put it to them like this: I'm like, "Look, you can keep coming, and I can keep trying." But if you're not trying, and I am, how far are we going to get? And that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I guess I'm willing to do that because, you know, I got to pay for my kids' schooling. You know, and and when I put it in those terms, they're like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I'm like, or you could, like, participate in this healing. I invite you into your own healing, and we could manifest this together. We could take care of this together. Or... I could keep pushing a stone up a, a mountain and see how far I can get because that that'll work for a while until it rolls back over top of me. But then I'll be done, you know. So it's just like how much of this am I putting in, and how much of this are you putting in to it? Or you know, my my I love it. You know, I get these men. They're like, I haven't been able to work in three weeks. I got all this work piling up, and I warn them. I say, Well, you're gonna feel good when you leave here. Please don't go home and conquer the world. Uh-huh. And or they will come back the next week. If I don't say that, they will come back next week and they'll say, yeah, I hurt worse than ever. I'm like, well, what did you do between now and then? Oh, uh, uh, chopped a cord of wood. <laughs> Moved the whole wood pile across <laughs> half a mile on my on my acreage. <laughs> Sat in a duck blind. <laughs> Um, I'm like, what are you doing to yourselves? Like, just because you feel good for the moment, you need to. Rest and relax and recuperate and, and drink recover. lots of water. You know, and... I give them directions, but they don't always follow it. And I, it's not always because they don't want to get better. Sometimes they're just being stubborn and silly. But um, <laughs> usually when I put it in those that perspective, you know, and I'm not going to send them away. But at the same time, I'm sending them away because they won't come back to me if if they don't agree. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they'll get sick of me harassing them and they'll just quit coming. So. You know, that kind of that problem seems to take care of or they won't or they'll or they'll give in and they'll start taking responsibility and say, you know what? You're right. I'm going to do what you say and we're going to see what happens. And guess what, folks? Those are the ones that start to get better. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. (laughs) I I left you speechless. Well, it just. Oh, I got caught. When I when I see people that I'll give you an example from a medical doctor. Steve, my husband, had that knee surgery. Right. They told him what to do to get better. Mm -hmm. And they told him within a year that knee would be better than it was from when he was young. There's the problem. Within a year. That scares people. Well. They want to see it now. But but, go on. yeah. Yeah. But these are the steps that he had to do. He had, and they, it was not easy. Mm-hmm. Right after surgery, he had to be on this machine that bent his leg eight hours a day in two-hour increments. Mm-hmm. In between then, he had to do these exercises, and he had to ice it, and he had to blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was tough. That sounds awful. And he had to raise it a degree and lower it a degree on the incline and, the you know, mm-hmm. what it bent every time he used it. Mm-hmm. So that was... Four degrees a day he had to, for um, six weeks, I think, Mm -hmm. maybe. That's actually pretty intricate. I'm glad they had him do that because they don't do that up in Huron County. They just send him home with an ice pack and they're like, call it good. Maybe physical therapy. Anyways. And then after that, then he had to go to physical therapy. Well, he said, and already I'm seeing his leg straightening out <gasps> that's beautiful and he's doing it all he did it all wow he, he wanted to did get better. it all he wanted to get better he wants to go back to work yeah. and i really admire that because Aww. i don't know that i would have done it i love that you just said that 
Well, it's he was very brave. That is there was very a lot admirable of, pain. of him. Yes, because it would be so easy to just go. This is too hard. And he didn't take that many. Um, they gave him all kinds of pain pills. He did not take all of them. Wow. He still has a lot left. See, and that not everybody's that strong. No. That's the hardest part because it hurts. But they when told him how stuff, to get better, hurts. and he did it, and that's the whole thing. Yeah. You it tell is people admirable. how. Why bother seeing a doctor or coming to you, a doctor? That's right. For healing and advice. When you get it, you're not going to do it. Right. It, it just makes doesn't no sense. make sense. But it does. To but them. it does. Because that shows people they're trying to get better. Right. 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 And that makes them feel better that they've oh, done something. I see. It something. shows other people they're trying to get better. Yeah. And then they can say to themselves, mm. I've done something. I'm not just doing nothing. I've done something. So what's the magic magic button what makes people want to get better i don't know i want to discuss this really quick though and maybe we can come up with a magic button so this woman talks about um she's more coming from the energy side of it and she's saying um have you ever wondered why some people heal from negative conditions with more ease than others i've been analyzing the reasons for this since i first began my healing career decades ago and she says she now can identify three main reasons so Number one is change. My favorite Mark Twain quote is, if you do what you have always done, you will get what you always have gotten or always got. People who continue to stay the same will create the same results, just as math's equation 2 plus 2 will always equal 4, no matter how many times you repeat the equation. This is the law of attraction. This is what we're talking about and we've been talking about. You put in what you get. You get out what you put in, Right. So if you want a different result, the numbers need to change. Your life is no different. Change is necessary if you want to create different outcomes. Your thoughts, actions, intentions, decisions need to change, which in turn attracts and creates different outcomes. So she suggests Um. that the answer, the button that you were talking about, is to analyze your thoughts, conditionings, and traditions. Question why you believe the things you do. And use the law of attraction. For example, if you believe that life is unfair and bad things always happen, you're saying Boom, to the you universe, got it. that's right. <laughs> Healing will not work. Things will go wrong. You know, and, and that's what we're talking about. Like, people are like, why bother? Oh, this hurts. Oh, What next? Yeah. Oh, exactly. people say that. Um, but letting go of negative thoughts and conditioning that don't serve you and change to a new and freer way of thinking to attract better outcomes These patterns are created everywhere you go. Watch for them. Choose to change them if they are not working for you. So being aware. Clarity. And make the choice. Make the choice. Do something different. And there comes the fear of change. Yes. Very much so. Fear of change. I've never done that. My family's never done that. We just don't do that. I want to tell you something. The biggest thing that holds people back is fear. Yeah. Fear of change. It's either fear or Even if they don't like their situation, God forbid you change it on me. Now what? Now what's going to happen, right? So they stay stuck in that one little... And they wallow. Mm -hmm. They certainly wallow. Okay, secondly, this is a given. Negativity. You're an energetic being, so the energy around you will affect you no matter how much you think otherwise. Speaking negatively blocks your chances of getting what you want, and associating with negative people leaves negativity in your energy field. For good energy to flow through to heal, you need positive energy, which is sourced from positive emotion. If your thoughts, intentions, and feelings are in anger, this will cause the same to be returned and will block the flow of energy healing or the flow of healing energy. So that, I think, is what happens to people. They Mm -hmm. get stuck in this negative situation. They become it, which is negativity. And then there's no way out. Right. And negativity feeds negativity. So if you are... If you are in a relationship with somebody that's negative, it's you feed off of each other and you that's just right. sink down lower and lower. And if you seek positive people, you can slowly be uplifted. But if you are negative, who are you going to attract? Yes. Negative. And people who are positive are super drawn to me. 
Like, I, I can't even tell you the cool people that walk through my door. Lord have mercy. And they are the most, some of the most positive, optimistic people. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. 